Amen. There's a miracle in my memory. All right. You know, it is an amazing thing to think about the power of the human mind. Yes. What the mind is able to do. All right. Uh, how 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 many calculations that go into just simply throwing a ball and catching a ball. Come on. They have been working for decades to try to replicate the human capacity within robots. Right. And it was incredibly difficult for them to figure out just how to get a robot to be able to throw the ball. But I don't think they found one that could catch a ball yet. Right. And, and the amount of, of calculations that is required and the amount of, of, of a, a, a computer power, processing power, that, that, that goes on in our mind. I was reading last night that the human brain is, is, is doing almost a billion calculations a second. You sitting there, you listening, there, there's so many things that are going on at once. You've got uh, multiple systems that are working right now. You've got your, your epidermis that's working. You've got your, your, your nervous system that's working. You've got all these different systems working at the same time in one body. And these systems are intertwined with each other. You've got the circulatory system. You've got the respiratory system. You've got the nervous system. There, our body has got all of these things working together. And if one of those systems quit working, if your lungs stop working, Come on now. you're dead. All right. If your brain stops working, you're dead. If your heart stops working, you're dead again. Right. Amen. And it requires such an, an amazing amount of, 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 of unity, of of, of, of uh, it's a miracle. Yeah, amen. It's just you taking a breath. Everybody take a deep breath. That is a miracle. Yes, because the air goes down into your body and your lungs grab that oxygen and process that oxygen and, and they put that oxygen in the blood. And the, the blood rushes and gives the oxygen to every cell in your body. And your cell in your body processes that oxygen and it sends all the stuff it can't use and Wow. Amen. Is that cool? Amen. And it's all working. It's all working together. And, and, and it all functions within the mind. The mind is the, the steering wheel. It's the engine. It's, it's what makes everything happen. Yes. And, 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 and man, how fearfully and wonderfully we are made. Yes. The Lord made us. The Bible says that, that God made man in His image. Yes. And without a doubt, when we consider the complexity of just the animal functions that take place within a human, it's amazing. Because right. dogs do that kind of thing. Come on. Right? Amen. But when you consider the distinction between humanity and all the rest of creation, amen, if you read the study the Scripture, man was God's crowning achievement of creation. He did not create a man for creation, but He created creation for man. Yes. The purpose of all the world that He created, it was for the fulfillment and the enjoyment of mankind. Right. After He had made everything that was to be made, then He made a man. Yes. Everything else He had created by His Word. But the Bible says that He stooped down and He formed man from the dust of the ground. He created man and then He breathed in man and man became a, a living soul. Body, soul, and spirit. And, and, and God gave man some incredible abilities. Incredible abilities. And one of the things that we are able to to rationally consider right and wrong. Come on. Amen? Yes, sir. Now, now you can train a dog yes. with an electrical collar. Amen. You can put around the, the, this piece of property and put a little uh, invisible fence. Come on. And you can put a collar on a dog and the dog will learn, amen, what a beat means. Come on. And he'll learn what a little stronger beat means. Yes. And if he gets close enough to that electrical fence, there'll be a bzz, right. And the dog has just learned a lesson. I stepped too far Amen. to the fence. Come on now. And if you have a dog in a yard like that, you can walk and you can basically figure out where that fence is because there will be a worn path where the dog is trying to figure out. And he will circle that property and he'll figure out the bounds of where he needs to be. That's right. Now, now you can teach a dog that. 
But, you know, God didn't do us that way. He didn't, he didn't put an electrical collar on us to say, you're going to do this, and I'm not going to let you do anything differently. But God gave man, you and I, the opportunity to choose what we will do with our life. I've heard people say, well, why did God put the tree in the garden? You know, if He knew that man was going to mess up, why give him an opportunity to make the mistake? Have you ever wondered that? Well, it all revolves around the joy of the choice. You know, who, who wants to do something because you have to? Huh? What joy is that? You know, if, if I take my boys and grab them by the nap of their neck and drag them into to, to Outback and sit them down on their seat and I point at that steak and I say, you're going to eat that whether you like it or not. Do you think they're going to enjoy that steak? But, <laughs> but what kind of a different perspective would they have if they came to me and said, Daddy, I really would like Outback. I'm in the mood for a steak. And if Daddy has the ability, Daddy's going to do whatever, amen, is good and right. Amen, not too expensive, too often. Amen. I, the, the Bible says that, 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 you know, I, which am evil, know how to give good gifts to my children. Amen. If my boys want chicken nuggets, amen, chicken nuggets it's going to be. Amen. And I am able and willing to do that type of thing for my kids. How much more is God going to do whatever is within His power to be sure that I find joy and fulfillment in my life? You, you know, it's amazing to consider the, uh, the, the, the way that God created the world. He, the Bible says that He created everything and then He planted a garden. Yes, he did. He, now, man, that's a hard thing for me to say, Brother Chris. Come on, God planted something. Yes. But God planted every tree that was good for food and good to look at. Yes. Imagine if God is selecting the plants. Watch out, man. <laughs> every tree. Now, there's a lot of trees out there. You go to different parts of the world, tropical plants and cherry bushes and cherry trees and strawberry vines and grape vines. My, what a, what a selection they have. And roses and lilies. Just imagine what Eden was like. You know what Eden means? Paradise. God created a paradise and put Adam and Eve right in the middle of it and said, hey, take care of it. We know. Adam and Eve demonstrate they are our mother and father because we just like them. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. God gives us good things. God does great things for us. And He says take care of it. And what do we do? We let a snake in the garden. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times people want to blame Eve for the fall. But really it was Adam's fault because Adam's command was keep the garden. Yeah. And if you're taking care of something, are you going to let a snake in the kitchen? Huh? What do you do with a snake? Kill it. Kill it. What did Adam do? Adam let the snake in the garden. It was the serpent. He let it in the garden and then let it talk to his wife. And it was dumb enough to do whatever the, the, the serpent persuaded his wife to do. Amen. I think so often we allow the enemy to insinuate itself into our life. And allow the enemy to insinuate itself into our blessings. And we allow the enemy to hurt us. Now we know what happened. The fall came, sin came, heartbreak came, death came, murder came, lying came. The Bible says that there came a time that, 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 that it was so bad. The Bible says that God repented that He ever made man. <laughs> when God gets to repent, yes, <laughs> The Bible says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of God. Yes, yes, and one man moved with a word from God, built an ark to save his family. Yes. And we see that God manifested himself in the lives of individuals. Yes. And eventually, we find through prophetic fulfillment, Mary had a baby. Yes. And because of the, the, the directions of the, the angel, both to Mary and Joseph, they named him. Jesus. 
or He shall save His people from their sins. So Jesus grew up as a child and walked the earth and, and, and He was baptized by John. And, amen. People that say that baptism is important, they just need to read their Scripture. Jesus said to John, John said, I'm not worthy to baptize. He said, suffer it to be so that righteousness may be fulfilled. If Jesus Christ needs to be baptized, I think everybody else does too. Amen. Is that right? Is that right? Amen. And so, Jesus in His ministry, he, he, he did a lot of things for people. We know that He healed the sick, raised the dead, caused the blind to see, caused the deaf to hear, the, the lame to walk. Yeah. Uh, I think it would be hard to find any physical ailment that is described in Scripture that Jesus Christ did not heal in His ministry. All right. And He went so far to somebody that was real sick with death. Yeah. <laughs> That's a really bad one. Yes, sir. Jesus Christ caused them to live again. Yes, yes. He did. And I think the story here we learn, you know, I, you know, John said that if it were possible to write down everything that Jesus said and did, that, 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 that all of the universe could not contain the books of what He said and what He heard. Right. Now, if that be true, how much more important is it what we have? Yes. I mean, how much more? And so, of all the things that Jesus did, this event found its way into the Scripture. And I'm going to, to read through it again. Luke chapter 17 and verse 11. And it came to pass, as He went to Jerusalem, that He passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Verse 12. And He entered into a certain village, and there met Him ten men that were lepers. Everybody say lepers. Yeah. Amen. Leprosy is a wicked disease. Yes, Amen. Leprosy steals the ability to feel pain. Yeah. And people will injure themselves. Yeah. And they will understand that they injured themselves. And they will continually injure themselves. They will scratch something and they'll keep scratching something and they don't feel the pain. And so they don't understand the intensity of their scratching. And so, amen, they will mar themselves beyond a recognition. They will keep kicking the same foot and never gets to heal. And before long, they lose fingers and toes and ears and nose and they become a very marred individual because the body cannot feel pain. Yeah. And that's what sin is. Come on. Sin is that which causes us no longer to feel guilty for what is hurting us. Yeah. How is it that someone can continually drink and drink and drink and drink and drink and continue to drink and they know it's hurting them, but they no longer can feel the need, amen, or can feel the ability or can feel something that would cause them to get up and say, it's a burning house, i got to get out. Yeah. Sin has the ability to, to, to steal our ability to feel the pain that sin brings into our lives. That's right. And here are ten men with a physical sickness, physical ailment, a physical disease called leprosy. Yeah. And when they saw Jesus, they stood afar off, verse 13, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when He saw them, He said unto them, Amen, here are ten lepers. Come on. Amen. Everybody say ten. Ten. Ten lepers. Ten men yeah. that were lepers. All right. They cried out. Jesus said, Go show yourselves to the priest. Yeah. Amen. Now, now, the only way they could go see the priest is if they were healed. They These the people could not get close so, to anybody else. They had to right. stay away. They wore garments. That's right. Not clean garments. Yeah. They were forbidden to get close or to, 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 to function within normal That's right. society. That's and so the Lord said, Go show yourself to the priest. Yeah. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Can I tell you that when we begin to obey the Word of God, every step we make in obedience brings healing and wholeness and cleanness to our lives. When we read the Word of God, the Word of God says you need to repent. Everything that we do to demonstrate repentance brings healing to our lives. That as they went, they were cleansed. Every step brought cleansing. Amen. I don't know how it looked. I don't know how it felt. But maybe they began it for a little bit. They took a few steps and said, Oh, ow. Oh, man, that hurts. Yeah. And then they began to realize, I'm, I'm not hurting anymore. Yeah. And as they went, the Bible says, And they were healed yeah. as they went. Yes, God. 
And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, Come on. turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. That's right. And then that leper remembered where the healing began. He realized, amen, this didn't just happen because I was walking down a road one day. But just a few steps back, I was a leper. And I'm not a leper anymore. I was a liar, but I'm not a liar anymore. I was a drunk, but I'm not a drunk anymore. And when he realized something has happened in my life, he turned around and fell at the feet of Jesus and glorified God because he realized this didn't start with me. The miracle in the memory. The Bible says that Jesus looked around and said, Were there not ten? Where are the nine? We live in a world full of people that have been touched and impacted by the Word of God. They have been prayed for and delivered. They have been fasted for and been healed. They have been uh, 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 delivered from spirits and drugs and all manner of sickness and disease. But as they walk, they have lost the ability to retain where it came from. Amen. The greatest thing that God can do in your life is for you, amen, to remember what God has began in you. And those other nine went and showed themselves to the priest. And they were healed. They were cleansed. But Jesus looked at this one of the ten and said, You're whole. Whole. That means if they scratched their nose off, it was whole. If they lost their finger, they were whole. Whatever the, the, the ravages of sin and heartache had brought to their life, because he remembered where the miracle began, amen, God brought wholeness to their life. Amen. And the reason why so many people in this world are living with half of God's purpose in their life is they don't return, amen, to the feet of Jesus and give him glory for what he's done. Amen. The miracle of a memory. Amen. You know, I would dare say that. That what God has already done in our life is enough to see everything we need done Come on. Yeah. right now. Amen. 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 How many of you can testify that God has healed your body before? Amen. How many of you can testify that, that, that you were in a circumstance you couldn't get yourself out of and, and God got you out of it? Amen. If He did it in the past, He can do it again. Amen. He can do it again. Yes, sir. Whether it's financial. Come on. Amen. I, I can tell you how the Lord has helped me financially. Yes. Amen. I can tell you about things that happened to me. Amen. And, and, and whether as a child. Amen. I stood up as just a, a, a 13, 14 year old kid and testified. I was 16 actually. And I in a prayer room one day before church I prayed and I told the Lord. I said, Lord... I don't like working for minimum wage. Yeah. And Lord, if you'll help me save up enough money to buy a lawnmower, I, 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 I'd like that. Yeah. And I remember, amen, I was about 16 years old and I stood up and testified at church and I said, I asked the Lord for one lawnmower. Yeah. And I've got six lawnmowers. Yeah. Three weed eaters. Yeah. Two edgers and a trailer. Yeah. Amen. Now Chris wouldn't believe that. <laughs> it's true. I really know how to use one of those things. Amen. I forgot. <laughs> Select a memory. Amen. I can say, and the deal is, if the Lord did that for me, He can do that for you. Amen. I can look at times in my life and I had difficulty in some relationships and I didn't know what decision I should make and I went to the Lord and the Lord helped me make a good decision. Yeah. It's never easy. Sometimes our life is faced with difficult decisions for us to make. And I know I want it to be easy too. But have you ever found hard decisions easy to make? I, 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 this is true for everybody. I mean, I know men that pray and they fast and they, they, they've dedicated their life to God in the ministry and they're having a hard time yeah. finding the will of God. Amen. You're not alone. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You, you're, you're not going through anything special or, 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 or out, of, out of the way. The Bible says that, that every sin, that, that everyone is tempted, that 
of sins that are common to me and everybody struggles with basically the same kind of issues. Is that right? That's right. Now, your particular situation may not be my situation, but at the end of the day, amen, we all are pulled and we all struggle with similar things. Is that right? Amen. I, I, I confess to you today that, that, that I, I, I wish that the Lord made it a little easier for us. I, I wish that, you know, when I got baptized at six and got the Holy Ghost at six, I wish that from that day forward, I never got tempted again. Amen. That I, I treated my little brother right. I cleaned up my room. Amen. I did everything right since that day. But do you know what? I probably didn't clean my room the next week. Amen. I'm living with two little boys that got the Holy Ghost here not too long ago. Amen. And some days you wouldn't know they got the Holy Ghost. I love them. Hallelujah. It has made a difference in their life. But you know what? They're just like us. Amen. They, they come to church tired sometimes. Sometimes their daddy asks them to do things they don't want them to do and they get in a bad mood. Just like you do. Your daddy asks you to do things you don't want to do and you get in a bad mood. Sometimes they have a bad day at school. Amen. And, and, and there, as children, deal with basically the same things you and I do. Yeah. They have bad days. Yes. They may not act right. Yes. Do I kill them? No. Huh? <laughs> do I hang them up by their toes and pour honey in their nose? No. I want to sometimes. <laughs> no. Amen, These things are common. I may be embarrassing this morning. But they're common. As children... To, to the longest day we live, we will have we will have struggle within our flesh. Yes. We will have difficulties in the world. We'll have things that we struggle with. Amen. You know, I think the example of this. Everybody say, "There's a miracle, There's a miracle. in my memory." Yeah. Think about that. Yes. You know, I think it is very interesting that when Jesus walked with his disciples, they didn't know really who he was. You know, Jesus asked him, who, who do men say that I am? Right. And only one person got the answer right. Yeah. One of them, I believe the reason why Judas betrayed Jesus is he was trying to force the hand of God. Yeah. He was trying to get Jesus to reveal himself as the king. Because yeah. Judas thought it was going to be financial enrichment. That's what I believe. I don't believe that he had some evil thing that just wanted to kill Jesus. I really believe that he thought Jesus was king and he's trying to force Jesus to reveal himself to the world so the kingdom would come. Judas had no idea that the kingdom would come through a cross. Yeah. Judas had no idea that the gospel would bring sacrifice. Yeah. And when he had to betray Jesus and betray him with a kiss, and he realized that it wasn't going like he had thought it would, the Bible says he went and hung himself. What an awful misunderstanding. The men that Jesus walked with didn't really know who he was nor understood the manner of his kingdom. My Lord. Amen? Yeah. And, but it's interesting that after Jesus died, the Bible says hey, they had forgotten yeah. that he would rise on the third day. Yeah. But as they sat there and mourned in the room together, Jesus appeared to them. And from that moment, they began to remember. You remember what Jesus said? Remember what Jesus said. For 40 days, Jesus showed Himself to His disciples. And the Bible says that He ascended up to heaven. And He said, Go tarry in Jerusalem until... Until... Everybody say until. Do you know that until is one of the hardest of things for us to obey? Pray until. Wait until. Obey until. What I said will happen happens. That's a hard thing to do. Pentecost was 50 days from Passover. Amen? Jesus was crucified at the time of Passover. He showed Himself for 40 days after the Passover, after the resurrection. So there was about a 10 day period there from Jesus ascending to the, the Holy Ghost coming. For 10 days they had to obey God without the Holy Ghost. For 10 days they had to wait. Amen? When, when, when they didn't understand what they were waiting on. All they knew is Jesus said, Go and tarry in Jerusalem until. Amen. Amen. It started out with 500. And at the end of the until, there was only 120. But the Bible says in Acts chapter 2, that when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one place and in one accord. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all 
the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. That's why we call ourselves Pentecostal. Because we believe in the Bible. We believe that God wants us all to have our personal Pentecost. He wants us all to get the Holy Ghost and wait until we get it. Amen. And so there they are. And I just imagine Peter. Peter was just like all the rest of them. He even denied the Lord. The Holy Ghost came. Amen. And what a glorious thing it had to be. The Bible says that the, 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 the message spread throughout Jerusalem. And they came to see what was going on. And they came and people were, I don't know what they were doing, but the Bible says they thought they were drunk. And they thought they were mad. And they were snickering at each other saying, Man, these people are drunk on new wine. New wine's cheap wine. Yeah. Mad Dog 2020, that's new wine. Come on. Huh. These, these men are drunk on cheap wine. And Peter said, Hey guys, these people may be drunk. He said, But they are not drunk as ye suppose. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. What a shaking going on. Amen. And Peter, think about him. Memory. Amen. Amen. And, and, and they, they all, they what mean of this? Memory kicked in on Peter. And Peter remembered when Jesus looked at him and said, oh, uh, And thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Unto thee do I give the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose in heaven shall be loosed in her. Amen. And Peter realized, hey, I wonder if he felt him. Watch out. Man. I remember something Jesus said. What you say? And he got up and he began to preach. He said, this is that. Yeah. And those people said, men and brethren, what shall we do? Yeah. The Bible says, then Peter said unto them, yeah. repent yeah. and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. For, everybody say for. And because of the remission, the forgiveness of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Everybody say, thank God for memory. God. I'm glad Peter didn't forget the name that day. Amen. You know, sometimes I have a hard time remembering people's names. But I'm glad on that faithful day of Pentecost, God picked the right one to preach the gospel. Yes. He didn't say, repent and be baptized up in the name of the Father. What's his name? The name of the Son or the name. He said in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Is that right? It's the Word of God. And every person in that day that was baptized, they were all baptized without exception in the name of Jesus Christ. Philip went down to Samaria and he preached to them concerning the kingdom and they were all baptized. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Yes, That's some strong stuff. Yes, I'm glad Philip remembered what Peter said. Because there's a miracle yes, in the memory of remembering and, and obeying Come on. what the Bible plainly says. Thank you. There's a miracle. Yes, a miracle. Everybody touch your hand. There's a miracle in there. A miracle in my memory. A miracle in my memory. Amen. Amen. It's probably feeling it more than I. <laughs> Amen. And I, I want us to stand together. I'm going to quit preaching. Amen. I want Chris to think I'm always a long winded preacher. <laughs> Amen. How many of you believe that you know that God has things in store for you that as of yet you have not received? Amen. Amen. If I could, I'd raise 10 hands. God's done great things in my life, but you know what? I don't believe we've even scratched the surface of what God has planned for my life and your life and our lives together. But sometimes, the greatest thing that God can do for us is for us to remember what God has already said.